Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Man, I feel good today. Thank you, Jesus. Let anybody shout. Everybody shout. Shout it real loud. Say, happy birthday, Pastor Nick. Happy birthday, Pastor Nick. Yeah. <laughs> He's going in there serving. Amen. Young, just young man that he is. Young at heart. Amen. Many of you would be surprised that, that, that he's actually my, my elder. <laughs> yeah. I got, uh, I got sons in the Lord that are older than me. Amen. And daughters too. Amen. Teresa, God says he's getting ready to order your steps like never before in your life. And you're going to find in this next three months, you're going to find every answer that you've prayed for the last three years. And the Lord said that you've been asking him about your steps. You've been asking him about, uh, I don't even know if it's a move in a certain direction, but there's some things that you've been asking about. And the Lord said, I'm going to, I'm going to show you and I'm going to, I'm going to show you how I'm, on, I'm going to honor you. And now, I'm, I don't know what all that means, but I almost saw like a ceremony where you're getting honored and you don't even want to go to it because it's it's like you don't even want to receive it. The Lord said, you're going to learn all over again how to receive in these next three months. And the Lord said he's going to begin to open up the windows of heaven. And I also saw that like a, like a t you, you ever followed any of these dump trucks, Teresa, and they have the tailgate kind of open and they're, and they're spilling out stuff. The Lord said, uh, uh, every now and then you're getting a little upset by things hitting your car. But the Lord said, it's just the blessings that are just right there. And the Lord said, they're getting ready to dump on you a blessing from heaven and God said it's going to come in the form of not only what you're asking him for but God said relationships and you're going to be used of God to teach on relationships and you've been cultivated in that and uh, you've been faithful to that and the Lord said because you've been faithful in certain relationships that at one time and even many times you've said to yourself I don't know if this is worth it. You costed me a lot more than I'm giving. And many times you give more than you get back. But the Lord said, I'm, I'm the Lord of the harvest, Teresa. And I... And I have your harvest, he said. And you've been following it. Didn't even know you was following it. You was looking at it. Sometimes you don't even like it because it's slowing you down. But the Lord said the harvest is not slowing you down. It's keeping you. It's keeping you from hurting your own self. And the Lord said because you're covered correctly. Because you're covered rightly. The Lord said safety is in the multitude of counsel. And the Lord said you can receive counsel today from those that are around you. Because God has heard your cry. And he's answering you now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody say, this is the Lord's doing. And it's marvelous in our eyes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's somebody else in here today. Uh, well, and I don't. I'm not going to pick, pick on anybody because I could physically do this, but this is not really what I'm doing. I'm not looking at you. But there's someone that's been concerned with, and I want to make sure I preface this right, because <laughs> some of my brothers, you know, you're really not concerned about this, but there's somebody that's concerned about the loss of hair. All right, come on now. I just felt like I need to make sure I qualified that. There's been somebody that's concerned about it. And I, I almost feel like it is a woman. But, 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 but you've been concerned about loss of hair. And that some hair is turning loose. And Ola Mahashanda so. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, I'm going, to, I'm going to prove to you that I am God. And the Lord said, I'm going to begin to bring new hair growth. And the hair growth, hair growth is, is synonymous with with power in the scripture and hair growth is synonymous with 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 pushing forward in the midst of pain in the midst of being wrongfully accused in the midst of being the wrong person in the wrong group uh, but you're the right person in God and the Lord said I'm going to show you that you got power with God and with man 
I said you got power with God and with man. I don't know who it is, but uh, maybe you need to go see my daughter for more haircuts because you're getting ready to grow. Somebody say, and Samson's hair began to grow. I almost felt like that was a prophetic gesture for this church. It just felt like that today. I don't know if it does me well to not preach for a while or does you well or not. But I'm, I'm going to give it to you today. Somebody say, we're going to get it today. And it's all good. Somebody say, it's all good. But God has been, God has been laying upon my heart this subject. We are being distracted. We are being distracted. And I, I, I want us to, I really am not going to deal with right now the distractions. But I want to, I just want to deal with how distractions work. And, 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 and how they seem to come, not only in a, in a, in a moment, but they come to an age as well, wow. to an era. Yeah. And so, so my talk over this next season, and again, I'm not prophesying right now about this, but I do see some things. And I do see some things that God wants to use this gift, not only here, but in other areas to speak this word. Because there is a need for us to be redirected in the mass distraction. So there are plenty of distractions. How many of you know there are plenty of distractions? One of our presidents was, was probably, will, will be known for this um, other than, could I get that water? I just want to take a drink of it. Um, but we'll probably the histo history will probably thank you so much. History will probably be uh, will, will not will not let this die. That one of our presidents, W, Amen. Y'all remember W? I had a friend that was his that was his middle initial was W as well, and his Facebook was D U B Y A W. And so nobody could ever find him on Facebook, but that was his name. <laughs> I said, hey, pretty smart. But George W. Bush was, whether right or wrong, he was, he was trying to discern and decipher whether or not um, that there were weapons of mass destruction um, and whether we know the truth about all of that or not, it's still yet to be, yet to be known. And we'll talk about some of that stuff too, maybe, maybe. The fact is, is that I heard this years ago, and I actually heard it through a, a woman of God that uh, we love to this day. And when she said that to me, I said, that's a word from the Lord. And that will continue to be a word from the Lord. That as much as, and it was during that time when the WMDs were huge and, and uh, they were looking for them. And, uh, and instead of finding the weapons, they found Saddam, right? Buried in a hole. But as much as there are, would be weapons of destruction, there are also... Weapons of mass distraction. That we start, we start right, but we end up being distracted. Has anybody ever started something and end up being distracted from the very thing you started? I mean, just talking about that. Folks are thinking about the presidents now, and they're thinking about all that. And, and, and how many of you know you can be distracted very easily, especially today? Oh, yeah. I'm going to use a case in point. 
um, had a good friend of mine uh, back in the day. Did y'all ever have higher ground come to the church and sing? Yeah. So anyway, uh, good friends of mine that we were probably one of the first churches years ago to host these guys. And uh, they were they were great guys. They were first guys that we didn't under we didn't quite know because they were dressers, man. We didn't know if they were metro. I mean, we just really didn't know. But they were really cool guys. But this, the senior guy was the guy who wrote the songs, and he wrote songs that Sandy Patty sang. I mean, he, this guy wrote some great songs over the years. But he's a good friend of mine, and he just went through the same thing that my, my, our good friend Clarence, uh, that, that Clarence Grant went through, the keyboard player for Bishop Garlington. He went through double knee replacement. Double knee replacement. Hit Wayne Hilliard. I don't know if y'all remember Wayne, but... We ought to have them because they've been wanting to come for a long time. And I, you know, we just, I, I, I'm being too transparent today. I should, I should be nice, but I just, I, I don't want to bring, nah, never mind. I, be, I need to quit. I need to quit. Um, but anyway, we'll, we'll bring them. We'll bring them. And uh, how many of you like to have maybe some guests like singing groups or stuff like that? Amen. Yeah, yeah we could do that. And, uh, but he had double knee replacement, and he, he and I are friends, and he posted this little thing, and it said, uh, it was uh, a question on Jesus, amen, 10, 15 questions on Jesus, and, uh, and, and, and it sounded all good, I mean, it was, they were really good questions, amen, good questions, and uh, so we did the thing, and, and uh, I, I, got, I, I couldn't believe it, I got all of them right, and then everybody I sent it to, they was all getting them, everyone right. And then, uh, and then somebody said, uh, you know what, I did it again and answered them all different, and I still got them all right. <laughs> how, many of you, how many of you ever felt like you'd been had? Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> I, I use that for a reason today. It's because we really trust in a lot of stuff that we really don't know where it comes from. Have you ever, now I'm talking as a 60, how old am I now? I'm 61, I just turned 61. I love my wife, I love my, I can't remember. What was that flower, it's got, it's got red petals. Rose, Rose. Yeah, Rose. Thank you, Rose. No, I'm just kidding. But the older you get, the more wisdom you collect in knowing. Uh, Y'all remember this saying, you got to know when to hold them. <laughs> when to show them and when to. Fold them. And when to walk away. I don't know about you, but I've been having to walk away a whole lot recently. And the Lord said, now it's time to show them. Somebody say, you may be asked to show your cards. And many times... Many times, man, it's quiet in here. <laughs> they working out or what, what? What did we do? What did we do? Many times, uh, I'm just distracted right there. <laughs> Y'all all right? Man, there's so much to this. Really, there's so much. You can be distracted. You can, you can, you can be distracted. You can be distracted. I mean, there's so many distractions, y'all. Just so many things that take your, take your mind off of what you're doing. Tom and I had a great time yesterday, man. I love you, bro. Man, this is the man right here. He's got a message I'm, I'm wanting him to work on. And the title of the message is, There's a Lever. What was it? There's a Lever? What? There's a Lever to the Door. There's a Lever to the Door. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You mean save it? I should tell it. There's a guy, there's a guy. And what happened to us this, this, this week? This has been a crazy week. 
A lot of stuff happened this week. Anybody else had a kind of a crazy week? No, seriously. Stuff. Letters in the mail. Emails. People going crazy. Calling you up. Sending stuff. People get your identity again. You're on the dark web and they're getting you, they're opening bank accounts in your name. They got your social security number. Online. A bank sends me a whole thing, says, thank you for applying for, for this. And uh, all you got to do is sign here, Mr. Collette. And he's got my name and everybody, but somebody else's email and somebody else's phone number, but my driver's license, my everything. And you thought you, you had your, your right identity theft company. And you learn that the identity theft company you use is owned by the company that makes the antivirus for your computers. And I just don't know if I trust a company that makes their money off of viruses that they're not getting, giving you some. Oh, help me, Jesus. I'm not that guy. I'm really not that, 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 that conspiracy theorist. But I am smart enough to know. I'm going to give... I'm going to give you a little benefit and I'm going to walk away. And I'm going to get somebody else. Somebody say, I might need to get a new bank or I might need to get a new this or I might need to get new this or I might need. And so, so somebody said, well, just get off of, just step off of everything. And so now we have a whole trend and it's, uh, we're going, we're going off the grid and we're going to go live. And these kids that are, don't know much, they were raised in houses with electricity and they had cameras and all that stuff. And they say, we're going off the grid and they moved to Alaska and about after two months, months in they're crying like little babies because they don't know nothing about milking no cow <laughs> oh, daddy mama no 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 oh no no oh, you walked away you said you got this that's not going to write a book and it's me titled, y'all can have that. <laughs> Bishop, why don't we do this? And we've done it like a thousand times in church. Let's do this. Let's do this. And we're going to say, y'all can have that. Because <laughs> we've been trying to build churches on what everybody else is doing. I'm still kind of in church 101, but... The fact is, is we, if we would just get us a food pantry, or if we can just get us a learning lab, or if we can just get a, that, we'll do it. And I'm just trying, I'm not making fun of anybody, but, but, but uh, somebody in this church, I won't say who it is, but they visited another church last week. And it's a large church. And they had, and it was up in our area. And I tried to tell everybody, we're not going to get no flooding. But they set up and went to all this expense and had a hospital set up and everything set up and there was nobody hurt. <laughs> anyway, and this brother said, what y'all got a hospital up in here? Ain't nobody hurt up in here. Y'all need to be down there. All right, hello. Y'all are in trouble because my message is right here. It's not even hardly up here. It's right here. Somebody say, I, I think I got played. <laughs> and I'm just telling you as an elder in the body of Christ, we may be being played and don't know it. Because I'm going to go old school on you here. Some trusting horses. Some in chariots. But we. Somebody say, but we. But we will trust. And how do we trust? Excuse me while I open my Bible. Somebody say, it's time to face it. We may have. And then somebody else come up on my deal, a friend, a young guy. We pastor people all over the world. I mean, we got people that we pastor for years. They, you know, we pastor people for about two or three months, and then they do their own thing. But anyway, they still want to stay friends with us and want the benefits, friends with, with benefits. And uh, 
and wants to call, I want, to, want you to pray for me, and I want you to, I want you, I want you, all over the country. And I want to, I want to be able to say, well, yeah, where are you at? When I needed, uh, I was hurting. I just need you right now. Can you change your whole schedule for me? I'll try. I'm just trying to be humble. And, and the answer is no. Oh, now, yeah, now my phone is calling myself. So my ID, distraction. And so I'm trying to handle this with your new entity, this and that. And now my phone's ringing and it's me calling me. And it's scammers now roboing my own number to call me. Have y'all ever had the roboers and they get numbers close to your cell phone number? Well, now they hit on mine. The computer, the algorithm hit on my number, Doc. And it's calling me every, it's probably called all, so I've got it on silent. It's probably calling me right now. So I can't block myself. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it gets better. Y'all say, oh, I just had a terrible. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah, so I'm trying, I'm on the phone trying to deal. I'm on the phone with the ID people, and I'm calling myself to scam myself. I'm going, excuse me, let me get this call because I'm calling myself because I got a scam built in. And I happened, the first time it happened, as I said, I thought it was the church because it looked like the same number and it wasn't. It was my number. And I said, hello. And that went, goodbye. And what they were saying is, goodbye, we got gotcha, you. And now we ain't going to let you go. So I said, well, go to do not call. I did that in 2007. And I'm going, okay, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay. And the Holy Spirit kept saying, and then, and then I would get distracted by this, and get distracted by this, and this would happen, and this would happen. And my sweet wife, I love her, and, uh, and, and, and she finally got back with Rhonda, and Rhonda was trying to call her all week, and Thursday she was calling her from her car. She got this new car, man, it's bad, because now she can talk on the phone without you know answering it and it's talking through the cold car and stuff we we've been we had old cars up and we didn't even know that existed <laughs> until now and it's only an 07 i mean some of y'all say that's old that's new to us <laughs> well it's new you know why it's new because i have the title no bank has that title I better be quiet. Stop it. Pride comes for the fall. Stop. I re let me take it back. Mm -mm -mm -mm. <laughs> so watch, watch this. Watch this. And so she's pulling in Thursday after work, and I'm hearing this car running in the garage. And it's running for like 10 minutes. I'm going, turn the car off. And I went down, and she's in there. And I could hear her, her speakers. She's got massive speakers, and the speakers, and she's talking with somebody. And I go, turn. Call. She goes, I can't, I'm on the phone. <laughs> I said, well, well, you can't. That's like, uh, that's like when you when y'all were little, you, did you ever listen to the radio and had them scary shows on and you were just like, you know, and somebody said, turn the radio off. Oh, anyway. And so she was talking on her car phone and I was going, that's cool, but turn it off. She goes, I'll lose it. I said, don't just keep the key on, right? And so she was like excited. And her and Ronnie were talking about stuff. And yeah, yeah, and like another 30 minutes went by. And so, you know, we had, a, we had an evening together, had dinner, and got up the next morning. She asked Friday's off. She said, I got to go to the grocery store. And then I heard her downstairs. Where's my keys? I go, oh, Jesus, help us, Lord. Somebody said, distraction, another, another distraction. And I said, I don't know. Last thing I know, you was in the car. You were talking, and she went out, and there they were. But the problem is, the key was on, and the battery was dead. And we're not about fault here. This is a no-fault state. 
right? Is this a no fault state? Insurance? It's no fault. It's a no fault marriage. Come on. Somebody say, this is a no fault zone. <laughs> and so, and so I, 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 I fix it. I'll fix it. I'll fix it. I sound like Randolph. Right? I'll, I'll fix it. 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 I come cut the tree. I'll do whatever. Come on now. Y'all love me. You know you love me. And so, so I was just being distracted. I had plenty. Of, oh, no. I didn't have nothing to do. I just like these guys who think pastors have nothing to do. Yeah. Yeah, boy. You just come over here on Sunday. We just hand you money, you know. Anyway. Yeah, no. I didn't have anything to do. And so, and so, so I was just, I said, oh, honey, I'll fix it. So the battery in this rig is in the trunk, right? It's in the, it's in the, it's in the hatch back. You've got to pull the hatch up and then it's, you got to pull the thing up. And so, so there's no, there's no, no physical button to open that back. It's, 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 it's a, it's a, it's an electronic thing. <laughs> and so I didn't have no battery. So I couldn't get to the battery. I said, okay, all righty. Well, thank God for an engineering degree, right? It came in. So I engineered and got, you know, a little juice just at least to the car. And I'll, t I'll tell you how I did that because some of y'all have been calling me when you lock yourself out. <laughs> I'm coming to your story. And so, and so I just said, I said, okay. And so I finally got a little juice and plug, and it, and it opened because I had a little jumper cable or whatever, a little 12 volt thing on the front. But anyway, my wife said, you know, something else. I go, you know, that's right. She said, you amazing. I said, yeah, you know, that's right. I said, I'll talk to you tonight. And, uh, and, uh. And uh, where was I before I was mass distracted? <laughs> Woo! Hashaya. Anyway, I was distracted for a second because she was like, you bad. I said, you know, that's right. And so, so anyway, it opened. It opened. I know some of y'all wanted some deep word today, and I'm sorry. I, I'll go deep with you. So, so, so it opened up. It opened. And I got in there and I had to back my car in because my car had batteries in the back. So I had to back the back to the back. And the, ba and the camera and the, and the boat and the battery is on one side and that battery is on the other side. And the cables are just, you know, it was like that. It was like that. Oh, oh, man, it's too short. And it's a couple inches too short. And I had to move stuff around and I back, backed it up and I finally just got it on there. And it, and it, it came on and, and we finally got it cranked and it was running. And I reached to grab it, the battery cable, and, and it snapped off and touched the other one, and, and all of a sudden, things started sparking, and, and the car went off. Both cars went, doo -doo -doo -doo. and I went, okay. Oh my God. Ooh, man, I felt my, mm. Ooh, I turned into the Hulk. Man, I was like, you ready to throw something? And then my neighbor was already trying to bother me. And he's already peaking. He's one of these guys who like, you know, and he's already he's out there right by the tree looking. And he was one of those guys, you know, did you get your new car? Yeah, yeah. What's wrong with it now? Yeah, you should have got. Oh, I'm just like, don't come over here, Ralph. Somebody say, not today, Ralph. Man, I could write a book. Somebody say, not today, Ralph. Leave me alone right now. You don't know. Somebody say, he didn't have all the information. He was about to make a wrong deduction. And when you know somebody's about to make a wrong deduction, you want to fix it right there. You want to fix them right now. And we're in a whole mass distracted society right now that I would just like to fix everybody. But I know I can't fix you until you get your eyes back on the prize, baby. It's just, it's keeping our eyes off the prize, Kathy. And then the prize was at this point, the prize was just getting out of the, I was going to say freaking, but get out of the garage. So look at your name and say, I just got to get out of the garage. I mean, you would never think just getting out of the garage would be your, your goal for the day. <laughs> right? I mean, you would never think going into it that you were just going to try at least to get out of the garage. Yeah. 
So I just, I had to chill for a second. And my wife was so patient. I watched her. She was. She, she definitely, she, oh, oh, oh honey. Mm. She left all of that, all of that frustration in the, in, the, in the rig somewhere. She just got out. Mm, it's okay, honey. It's okay. Ooh, and she went up the stairs and closed the door because she knew she did not be out there. It's not time. Somebody say, it's not time to talk. You know, sometimes when you're being distracted, it's not time to talk. Don't talk to me. Rhonda, right? Rhonda knows it. Her daughter, what's your daughter? She knows it. Sometimes you just got to go, mm, 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 mm. not the time, Ralph. So anyway, so if you ever hear me say, not today, Ralph, you know what I'm talking about. Just hold off for a minute. And so I said, okay, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. So I put the cables back on. And it wouldn't crank. Click, mm, click, click. I went, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> How many of you know it's so good to have a relationship with Jesus? Because I'm going to tell you something. He gets you out of stuff. He gets you out of stuff. And don't be playing no blame game at this time. That's not the time to do it. If I would have just. If I would have just. No, no, no. Just thank God. Call him angels. Somebody say, call him angels. Woo, come on angels. Battery angels, whatever. Fight them battery devils. Electronic, whatever. Make everything work, Jesus. Come on, somebody. Have you ever gotten yourself into something and you know you over your head and you're going, come on in here, Holy Ghost. I messed up royally. So we finally got it to crank and I had spent some time on that rig and got it right man i mean right and i spent a little bit on it because i got it so cheap and i spent some good you know time on it and got all the lights off i mean you know when them lights come on you know most people don't don't even worry about it. I, I i can see them going down the road i can hear them <laughs> and they're just driving like nothing's wrong and i'm going yeah you might want to check check your yeah, me and Kyle the same way. One light comes on, let's get the parts now. <laughs> We're under it that afternoon, aren't we, bro? That's right. Most people, ah, just, they just, you know, they just put a little piece of paper over that light. I don't see no light. So, somebody say, what noise? Somebody just turned the radio up real loud. I don't hear no noise in that motor. No, 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 no. And so, 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 it finally cranked, and I went and looked, and every light on the dash was on. ABS, back, every light, every warning light was like going, you're an idiot, you're an idiot, you're an idiot. I said, no, I'm not. I'm covered, smothered, choked, blessed, chunked. I'm everything. I'm, I don't eat at Waffle House, but if I did, <laughs> anyway, anyway, before I fell, anyway, I was going to tell you, I cranked it and I said, all right, Holy Spirit, help me. And here's what he said. He said, do what you want to do. I said, what is that? He says, get it out of the garage. He says, get it out of this environment. Move out of this environment that is messing your mind up. It's messing the way you think of. You just need to change your location. See, some of y'all just need to move a little bit. And I said, okay. I backed it out. Now, now I know now electronically what was happening, but I didn't know then. But I backed it out of the garage, and the front end cleared the garage. Every light on the dash went out. It was clean, clean bill of health. Somebody say it reset. See, sometimes you've got to get out of the pseudo bullshit. You don't want me to preach today because I will. I'm coming for you. Sometimes you just got to get yourself out of that mindset. You got to move yourself up out of that apartment. Get, it, get yourself up out of there. Get yourself up out of there. Go to the park. Walk. Pray. Fast. Do something. But get up out of there, man. Don't keep putting yourself through that. You got to get up and get with it, baby. And then everything started working great. And then, man of faith that I am, I'm texting her. 
is everything still okay? She goes, yes, honey, it's fine. There's not nothing going on. You're the man. I go, that's right. So, so I'm telling this story yesterday to our men. And I'm telling you how God will, will cover you. Somebody say, God will cover you, man. And, and this brother was saying, yeah, he said, I know a guy like that. He said, he, he was stuck in his car. It happened to him. But he was in the car. And the battery died. And he couldn't get out. He couldn't unlock because they disappeared down in there. He couldn't get out. And I guess he was a man that didn't know a whole lot about cars. No, he was no, he didn't know. But he is in there for 14 hours. And he had done hurt his head, his hands. He was trying to bust the wind out with his head, with his hand, kicking it out. He tried everything, everything, everything. So he finally just wrote a note to everybody and said, I guess I'm gone. I'm dying here. He is ready to end it all. And the guy showed up and came and opened the car. I guess he had found the keys outside or whatever. Opened the car and the guy said, oh, Jesus, you saved me. He goes, man, he said, I'm so glad. He goes, I've been here 14 hours. I was getting ready to end it all, I guess. <laughs> he goes, well, next time it happens, just know this. There's a lever right here not down by your foot. <laughs> So I told him, I said, you need to preach that. Somebody say, there's a manual. Actually, there's probably a manual in the glove box if he'd have just read it. Somebody say, if you just read the manual. God, you got to preach that, man. If you don't, I'm going to. I already did. It's not your thunder anyway. Somebody say, good story, Tom. Let me at least get to a Bible scripture so you don't think that I'm... I want us to be able to see past the distraction. That's really all I'm asking. I'm not saying don't go for it and don't stand for righteousness and all of this stuff. But don't be distracted from at, from the, at the end of the day thing. Okay? Because at the end of the day, you have to know this. That Jesus may ask you a question. That's going to be hard for you to answer. And that would be if you spend all of your energy, let's say, on, hmm, hmm, I'm going to probably get letters on this. But let's say you spend all your energy on how, how right the premise is that uh, you should bow and you should reject the fact that, that, the, that the nation is wrong about certain things, all right? There are some things that are wrong in this nation. We know that. We know that there's some things that are, that are wrong and some people groups that have been treated wrong. And I understand that. And, 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 and believe me, if we, don't, if we don't understand that, we lose track of history and all of that. But let's keep backing history up to a lonely hill right outside of Jerusalem. Let's make sure that our foundation is sure that we don't stop short of what real righteousness is supposed to look like. Are you all with me today? And I was, I was asking myself, God, help me with this because I don't want to just find a scripture for a cause. Am I looking for a scripture for a cause? Or am I looking for a cause for a scripture? I, I'm just wondering how we are looking at stuff. Somebody say, how we look at it. Everybody say, hmm. So let's begin today in our first scripture. And we'll just go from there. Somebody say, we'll just go from there. I wish you would bear with me. Now watch this. And this is what I'm going to tell you today. Oh, there's so much here. Now, somebody say, this is in the Bible. This was canonized as New Testament scripture. How many of you believe that all scripture is inspired? Okay. I wish you would bear with me in a little foolishness, but indeed, 
you're bearing with me. Now, Paul, Paul, who was the spiritual father to this church in Corinth, okay? And he said, I know that you get me. Can I go ahead and reveal why I went through all of that to get to this? Because that sounded a little foolish to some of y'all. Like he just going on. But I want you to understand that Paul said, you know me. You're already bearing with me. You get me. That's why I said what I said about Bishop Jakes. His people in Dallas get him. And understand him and recognize and realize that if they came down on him for letting his daughter and he cried over it, him and his wife and we talked about it, he says I had no clue I had no clue that my daughter well maybe you should and I, I mean come on now you know how we do well maybe you should you should have kept turn off the internet maybe you should have maybe you should have remember we see the world as we are and that's what we're doing there we're trying to tell them based on the way we see the world I, I don't I, I'm not you boo I'm not you I don't live in your I don't live in your house I didn't know you guys had no idea how my week was till now <laughs> And it didn't end there. I'm just going to end there because it just got, I just can't go anymore about it. Uh, I wish you were, would bear with me, though. So, so you bore with me up to this point. And he told the Corinthian church, I need you to bear with me a little bit. This is going to sound foolish. At another point in the scripture on Devon, you know what he said? He said, the things of God are, finish it, foolishness to those that don't believe. He said it sounds foolish. And we don't know that everybody was a believer that was listening to him. He said bear with me a little bit. Basically he says I'm fishing here for you to hear me. So I'm going to talk a little bit tongue in cheek. But you're going to hear my heart. How many of you like to listen to comics? Eh, clean comics. Very few that are left. One of my favorite was Sinbad. I mean, I loved Sinbad. <laughs> Clean, right? But you can't hardly listen to any of them anymore. Because it's just, it is, it is what it is. And they wish they, and you all said the same thing. Man, I wish Kevin would have stayed. Clean. Kevin funny. Come on. Yeah. Kevin was funny. Still is funny, but I can't listen to it. We should bear with me just for a minute. Bear, bear, bear with me. This might be a comedy club for some of y'all. He said, but I wish you'd, uh, he said, keep coming. He said, but here's what I want you to hear. Because a lot of comics are really political and they're saying a whole lot. Yeah, right? True. Trying to help you here. He said, I'm jealous for you with a godly jealousy. He said, I really love you. I'm a papa to you. I love you. He says, for I betrothed you. To one husband. He's basically saying. You're not married to me. This is not about. Making Bishop happy. Come on somebody. About making Paul happy. He said. You all are betrothed to one husband. Somebody say. One husband. So that to Christ. I might present you. As a pure virgin. What was he saying there? He's saying, I, I want to present you as not having slept with any other ideas and any other husband. I don't need you to marry that. I need you to make sure you know who you're married to when you stand in a line to shake your fist. Make sure you understand at the end of the day, if Christ asks you, could you pray for that government that you hate? Would you go and meet with and pray with the president you hate? Whatever. A young pastor who now pastors in Greenville, South Carolina, John Gray. How many of you know, like John? 
And John received an invitation a couple weeks ago to go and sit at a table. And he got to sit and he got to pray. And he's received more hate mail criticism. Had him on CNN. I mean, they are trying to bring him down. But again, that's not our ruler. If, if that's our standard, we're drastically missing the mark. I, I'm treading, y'all. I'm treading out here, and y'all just need to pray for me because I'm coming on with it. It's time for a come to Jesus meeting. It's time for a come to Jesus. Not come to anything else but come to to Jesus and maybe it's a come back yes. maybe Jesus is saying come back you know we do these campaigns they have them now in October we get all these emails it's back to church Sunday mm -hmm. buy your bag and, and, and it's companies that are selling banners for five hundred dollars which cost two dollars to make or whatever yeah come on buy all these banners church and but let's spend ten thousand dollars so we for one Sunday that we're gonna beg people to come Y'all don't want me. I'm trying to get myself out of a job, I guess. I don't know. But, uh, I mean, I told, some of the, I told somebody this week, I said, I'm sorry. But I, I, I'm not going to beg. You know, I'm not going to beg. I'm not going to beg to bless you. If you don't believe in my gift, that's fine. I'm not, I'm not here to win in popularity. But I'm not going to beg people to come to church. I'm not going to beg all those empty rows that once were filled a few months ago. But don't like it no more. That's all right. I'm not going to beg to bless you. I'm not going to beg to bless you. There are people asking all over the world for, for me to come and bless them. In Africa, yes. Namibia right now is begging me to come. Some of y'all got acting scared right there. Oh, God, Bishop. No, no, no. You're in good hands if I go. Amen. But she ain't going to beg you either. So I say, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I, I, I'm jealous for you with a godly jealousy for I betrothed you to one husband. I said, baby, baby, baby doll, listen, honey pie, get, listen, sugar, brother, bl blessed saint, saint of God. Don't get distracted in this midterm election. Or whatever. But right now, that's the big piece. For I betrothed you to one husband. Oh, this is just the beginning. Because somebody say, well, the laws need to be changed. And there are bad laws. And that's right. But there's one lawgiver. See, you've got to be in the Bible when you talk about this stuff. Not on a, not on a side. Somebody say, sides got mixed up when Jesus came. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. Jesus mixed all the sides up. They were like, wait a minute. He's hanging with publican and sinner. Wait a second. He's over here. Wait a second. He walked into the temple. Wait a second. He said, he said this day it's fulfilled in your ear. Wait a second. He said, what is he saying? He's saying, wait, he's walking over there with the wine. He's over here with these guys. He like walking. He's crossing every line. He's, he's out of line. He's out of line. What are we going to do? We need to get rid of him. and We need to get rid of that. We need to merge everything together in a nice rainbow coalition, baby. It's not going to take a preacher. It's not going to take another, oh, it's not going to take another Martin Luther King. Somebody's thinking that's what it's going to take. No, no, no. No, they killed the prophets, the Bible says. That's right. Yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah. Wow. We're not looking for another, we're not looking for, we're not looking for another high and lofty ideal. We're looking to get back to Christ, yes. who is, yes. who's our, who's our husband. We're married to Christ. We want you to be, pastors want you to be married to the Sunday morning service. Married to the offering. Married to the building fund. Are y'all with me? 
If we never have a building, we have a building. That's what the scripture says. We have a building not made with hands. See, my saints know this. Y'all know this. Y'all know this. I'm not preaching to y'all. I'm preaching trying to get outside of here through that little lens back there. Maybe somebody's hearing this. I betrothed you because y'all know this. Somebody say, y'all know this. You know where the lever's at. Somebody say, I know where the manual's at. And it told me. And then now, nowadays, I know where Google's at. Come on, somebody. I'd be Googling. How do I get out of it? <laughs> For I betrothed you, I'll be going live. That's right, I'll be going live on Facebook like my brother does. Hey, I'm over here in the car. <laughs> somebody, somebody come over here right now. Thank God for Facebook Live. For I betrothed you to one husband so that I, go I may present you as a pure virgin. Keep coming, baby doll. I love you. But I am afraid. Oh, oh, don't say that, Paul. That's negative confession. Don't ever say I'm afraid. I know. Bear with my foolishness for a minute. I probably didn't say the right word. Wow. This is why people shut, shut us down. We missed one word. And they'll pull it out. They'll pull it out. You said I'm afraid. Well, I don't believe in fear. God not give us a spirit of fear. You can flip out. And that's what you sound like, an old cackling hen. And people don't want to dash and say, well, I'm cackling hen. No, I don't find it. No, listen, y'all, listen. I done paid my dues. I don't walk in this thing. I've been walking this thing. I'm not, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to tell the truth. I am not afraid to trade the truth. To tell the truth, but I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve, your minds will be led astray. You hear your papa in the Lord. That your minds will be led astray. He didn't say your heart. But your mind is being led astray because something your heart believes in. And I believe in it. I believe in righteousness. Believe there are wrongs being done in this nation. I believe that the criminal justice system needs an overhaul. Oh yeah, I believe. But it doesn't need overhaul by a politician or a preacher. It needs overhaul by a visitation from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It needs overhaul by a radical visitation from Jesus Christ, the only righteous judge. When we have a come to Jesus meeting, may God use your bishop to reach into places, into preachers' hearts, that are preaching another gospel and don't even know it. That are calling on me now. And say, listen, I need to talk to you. And I don't want to talk to them. Because I don't like them. Don't like their doctrine. Don't like how they're standing. I don't even want to get in an argument with them. I'm not doing it. If you want to preach Christ, preach it. Preach Christ. Oh, I was asked years ago to enter all kinds of things. I remember when the teaching on Cush came out. Do y'all remember that? And those brothers were sincere. But I said, can I come to your meeting? You know what they told me, Carolyn? They said, no, you can't come. I said, why? Well, you just won't understand. I said, well, help me to understand. I'm here to listen. I'm here to hear your heart. Let's talk. And at the end of the meeting, they said, no, you just can't. I said, well, I can't fellowship with you. Wow. Not around a cross that was made with wood that red blood fell down. And I can't fellowship with you, but I'll still save your life. 
Because if my blood is your type, whether you like me or not, and whether you agree with me or not, if you're laying on the side of the road dying, they can strap my white arm to your black arm, and I can give you my red blood and give you life. I said at some place, we got to lose our agendas and get back to the blood. I'm afraid, he said, that as the spirit deceived Eve, now you need to go back and relook at how that deception started. Because everything was great. Everything felt good about it. It was logical. What the thing, what the serpent said, well now, 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 hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Somebody say, no, I'm not holding on a second. I'm not holding on a second. I'm staying in the spirit here. Because I know what you're after. You're crafty in the, into my mind. You're, you're crafty into getting me to answer 15 questions about Jesus. You're crafty. And really all you wanted was for me to click on because your algorithm said if you can get so many people to click. And you baited me by saying no one can get this right. And now everybody can. Everybody gets one. <laughs> Somebody say crafty. Did God bring it to us today? That's the word of the Lord. The enemy wants you to think that everybody is going to get it. Not everybody's going to get it. Watch this. I could, I could be, be misquoted here, misunderstood. Everybody is included. Included in what, Bishop? Included in the plan of God. But if you don't get in the plan, the plan don't work for you. You're in the car. There's a lever. But if you don't know it, you might die with the answer. You might commit suicide thinking it's over. And wake up in heaven and God say, there was a lever. A deliverer. <laughs> Somebody say, a deliverer. I, 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 I need a little help. Your minds will be led astray. So t let me say, say something to you, just, just so you know, and I'm going to try to close. The enemy is not after your heart. And that's the piece that breaks mine. Is that I see people whose heart are so genuine. But their minds are being led astray. Yeah. Yeah. My heart was right about answering those questions about Jesus. But my mind was being messed with. And I had no clue that my mind was being messed with. But now I know. Somebody say, now I know. Now, what's, what what what, 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 what's going to be the result of that? Well, most people would just go off the grid after that. No. Most people would just say, well, yeah, you know, you're going to get me. You give me once. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Come on, it's like the old boy, the mail deliverer. He said, when the dog, the first time the dog bites you, it's the dog's fault. Right. <laughs> Y'all can finish it. But we have a generation of young people that are saying, oh, no, we ain't going we to do it. We're hungry. We're hungry. Show us. Let us sit at the feet of an apostle. Just let us sit at the feet of an apostle who we trust, who we under, who we love, we know loves us, who, who, who we, we, we will bear with your foolishness for a minute because you've proven you loved us. I can't wait to see. I'm so excited to see what God has in store for the generations that are coming together. 
I look and I see and I talk with young people like Do Dominique. Which Dominique really stirred me this week because I, I just love that girl. And she's going to come and spend some time, amen, in the church here. Would that be cool? Yeah. But, 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 but there's a representation. There's a whole large group of young people that are begging for fathering. And her dad and I are fathers. We're fathers to generations of young people. And I'm going, God, raise up fathers. Raise up spiritual mothers again. Come on, somebody. See, y'all, some of y'all were raised in church where a mother was the was a mother was sit with a white dress, you know. Come on, that was the spirit that but that was just the that was just the elderly. No, we need spiritual moms that, that really, and some of them really were spiritual moms. They'll tell you, they'll pray for you. They say, son, no, son, you're not, you're not. And, and, and we got a generation now that thinks they know more than their mothers or their fathers. And so we step back for a minute and let them almost hang themselves. Oh, baby, 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 no, 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 you don't, you don't know how, you don't know how to jump no car, and then you think you got it, and then yours messes up, and you fry a battery, yeah, you got a degree in it, so God always knows how to humble us, no matter what station of life we're at, he always lets us know it's not you, it's not you, just make sure you know that, Mr. Apostle, Let's not let our minds be led astray from the simplicity and purity of devotion to Christ. That's, that's really what I want to get to today. I got tons more on this. But I want to tell you something. I want to tell you that some of, some of you need to go, and if you've not studied the, the history of the church, you, you should. But I'm not talking about the history of, of the Methodist church or Baptist church. I'm talking about knowing who Polycarp was. Ignatius. I think you need to at least know who these men were who stood in the first century church in the face of the attack against Christianity. Polycarp was an understudy or a disciple of the Apostle John. And when John, when they couldn't kill John, did you know they couldn't kill John? No, did y'all know that? They tried to kill him. They tried to boil him in oil, man. And he still, it didn't work. He was like just a hard, tough piece of meat, I guess, huh? And so they said, well, you're just going to have to live out on an island. And they threw him out on an island called Patmos. My wife and I saw it from, from land. We were looking at it a few years ago. Right there. And he finally said, I've got to go and do what I promised I would do. I've got to take care of Mary. And he went from the island of Patmos right across 30 miles, 20 miles over to Ephesus and took Mary, Mary, and nurtured her and cared for her for the rest of her life because he made a promise in Jesus he would do it. He made a promise. And as he did that, men came around him. One was this young man by the name of Polycarp. And he took him under his tutelage and he loved him and he, he pronounced him the bishop of of Smyrna. My wife and I didn't even know this, but Smyrna, we, didn't, we knew where, where it was, but Smyrna was where we stayed. We slept in Smyrna for 10 nights at her biological father's home. It is now called Izmir, Turkey, but it was originally Smyrna. And Polycarp was the bishop that, that John pronounced the bishop of Smyrna.
And Polycarp became amazing. I want you to look up tonight. How many of you will do it? Go home and look up. I want you to look up some of the same because I'm going to be I'm going to be talking about Polycarp. And we might actually rent this place out and show the movie Polycarp because it's an amazing movie. But the fact is, is that is that Polycarp became a bishop of the very place that my wife's biological father has lived. And now we meet this guy who is a Muslim and God used Polycarp to win Muslims. And I have no clue, but that her biological dad may be related. I have no clue. But here we are in this New Testament day, going back and looking at some of these men who said, I will, excuse me. He said, one of his quotes is, excuse me, I will not argue with you because I am a Christian. No matter what you say, I am a Christian. And one of the things that, that Leif Hetland said in his book is that, that he would be challenged when he would go in and speak about Jesus Christ in these huge Muslim gatherings. And he would be confronted about speaking on love. And you know what he would do every time? He shared the story about loving that family from Kosovo to those Muslims. And he won them through his story. And Polycarp said, I am a Christian, and he won, he won people to the Lord for his life, and they, they killed him, or they tried to kill him. How many of you ever read Fox's Book of Martyrs? How many of you have ever heard of the Voices of the Martyrs? I mean, you need to read about some of this stuff, guys. Polycarp, they tried to burn him at the stake, and he wouldn't catch on fire. The flames wouldn't even light on him. He would just stand there in the flames. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So they ended up having to plunge a knife into him to kill him. And we're worried about not standing up. Come on now. Somebody say, I'm ready to stand. We're going to talk about Polycarp. We're going to talk about... Ignatius. We're going to talk about Arrhenius. We're going to talk about Tertzula. We're going to talk about uh, uh, Clement of Alexandria. Listen, you need to know that you have great foundation, men and women, who stood the test of time, who took this message and said, it's Christ. When we celebrate St. Patrick's Day, it's not about drinking green beer. It's about Christ. Go back and read. Somebody say read a little bit. Well, I'll just see if it's on the internet. I've been challenged lately to get some quiet time like I've, and I have been. Some of you might, might think I've been avoiding you, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm challenged to get quiet. Somebody say sometimes you need to get quiet. And God has to, God has to get you quiet if he's going to use you. This is what he said to me about Moses. He said, I had to prove him privately so I could use him publicly. And this is what God is doing with some of you. He's just been proving you. Somebody say, keep it up, Lord. Close your Bibles, close your iPads. Father, we thank you today in Jesus' name. We declare that we will not be distracted. That we will keep our eyes upon the prize as much as that sounded like a nice little rhyming idiom it was so much more being said Lord because you're the prize you're the high calling and so today Lord we thank you for every righteous stand that every person makes for the cause of of Christ and that Christ would be exalted Christ would be lifted like St. Patrick said that Christ would be the center thank you for these precious men and women of God that Lord history has taught us something that Lord if we don't stand for something we'll fall for anything Lord we have taken our stand and like Polycarp said Excuse me.
I am a Christian. And nothing will ever change that. That's what he said. So we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. We rededicate if we have to. But Lord, we say, I'm yours, Lord. Come on, lift your hands and just say, I'm yours, Lord. I'm yours. I'm yours. I'm yours. I'm yours. I'm wholly yours. In the name of Yeshua. Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Papa. And maybe like Mary said two Sundays ago, maybe that is it. Maybe you came up. I watched a lot of you come up and say, listen, it's, it's time. Lord, as we as a church begin to begin to reform, reformulate things and look at why you brought us together and, how, and, 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 and who you brought to us and, and who that belongs in this house. May we say to you, Lord, like the prophet said, here am I, Lord, send me. Here, here am I, Lord. Here, here am I, right here. Here I am. La, da, 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 da. Oh, yeah. Somebody say, here I am, right in your presence, waiting on you, waiting on you, waiting on you, waiting on you. And the Lord, you would say, okay, you got my attention. Now go. He told his disciples, go. Go into all the world. Preach the gospel. So I declare to you today, go into all your world. Go into all your world and preach that good news. Preach that good news. Preach that good news. Yeah, sit at the table. Sit at the table. Get on the panels with them. That's fine. Get on the panels and tell them this is awesome. This is awesome. This is awesome for us to bring up to this. But at the end of the day, the righteous judge, Jesus Christ, will judge the world. And I don't want to leave this world with anything lacking. So before I leave this, this talk, before I leave this text, before I leave this, I want to tell you, it's Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And if He's lifted up, by the way, I'm going to deal with that scripture. If, I not, if I'm not lifted up, I will draw all men. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men. And He's not talking about a praise song. He wasn't talking about a praise and worship song there. Lift it up. We're just going to lift Jesus higher in our praise. No, no. He's talking about a cross, baby. He's talking about a death. He's talking about going through it, man. Jesus, you were lifted up. And now you've told us to take your cross. So, Lord, we thank you for the cross. Come on, let's thank him for the cross today. Let's thank him for his cross. lonely 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 place a lonely place and did you know that the bible says that abraham saw that the bible says jesus looked at him and he said abraham saw my day abraham abraham saw it he saw my day he saw my day and he saw that day i told the men yesterday when he was on mount moriah with his son getting ready to plunge a knife into him and right across he looked and there was a ram caught and it is my belief that that place that he saw the ram was Golgotha because Moriah to Golgotha is a stone's throw you can throw a rock from Moriah and by the way Mount Moriah is still occupied by the Muslims they still have under the dome of the rock you, you, there's no Jewish person go there but that is the holiest place in, in, in geography according to the Jewish people why? It's because that's the place Jesus will touch down. Mm, mm. It makes me want to get happy about the fact that you can cover up. It's the greatest cover up of history. The greatest cover up of history to believe that Mohammed went to heaven there and that's the place. If you'll go to Mohammed, you'll get it, you'll get everlasting. Come on, somebody. When you reach into that rock to touch the rock, they, they have these little bristles and they, they touch your hand when you're under there. And that's supposed to be his beard because that's where he left his beard. 
I don't know about you, but I'd rather touch the hem of Jesus' garment than the beard of Muhammad. See you, bro. You didn't show back up at the wedding. Jesus is here right now. Manifest your glory in the earth again. Manifest your glory in the church again. Let there be glory in the church. Age without end. That's what Paul said. Let there be glory in the church again. I pray in Jesus' name. Can everybody say amen? Would y'all get anything out of that?